Li Zhue, Guo Si, and Fan Shao. Commonly depicted as a pair of treacherous military generals and politicians, Li Zhue and Guo Si would both go on to become warlords after the death of Dong Zhuo. They inherited control of the Han Empire's Liang military forces and then appointed themselves as regents after taking Emperor Zian as a hostage. Li Zhue originated from Bei Di Commandery and has a few rumours surrounding his name. It's claimed that he was one of Dong Zhuo's earliest recruits, and that he was adept in military affairs, but inept at politics, where he would find himself often conflicting with his colleagues. Fan Chao and Guo Si were both from Jin Cheng Commandery. Fan Chao started his career after Dong Zhuo rose to power, whereas Guo Si was present for Dong Zhuo's earlier battles. Li Zhue and Guo Si fought in most of Dong Zhuo's earlier conflicts. They both participated alongside the Liang troops when they were sent to replace Lu Zhi in sieging the Yellow Turban leader at Julu Commandery, but they failed to make any impact. Once the Yellow Turban Rebellion was put down, they aided Dong Zhuo in his battles during the Liang Province Rebellion. It's rumoured that by the time the anti-Dong Zhuo coalition was formed, Li Zhue had earned himself a reputation as a credible military general. The Eastern Warlords united against Dong Zhuo's tyranny. They formed a blockade which cut Liu Yang off from the eastern part of the Han Empire. This prevented Dong Zhuo from receiving tax from that part of the country, which drove him to flood the market of new coins, drastically inflating the economy. Guo Si and Niu Fu were sent to fortify Mei County. They massively increased the area's defences before stockpiling 30 years worth of food at a time where starvation plagued the lands. Sun Jian's chain of victories for the coalition forces was only broken when Dong Zhuo burned Luo Yang to the ground and relocated to Chang'an. This forced the Tiger of Jiangdong to stop and provide aid at the destroyed capital. Li Zhue, Guo Si and Niu Fu were ordered to the front line to cover Dong Zhuo's retreat where they stationed at Shan. With Sun Jian preoccupied and internal conflicts within the coalition rising, Li Zhue and Guo Si faced little threat as their lord retreated. Xu Jin struggled to find anyone to help him in his futile attempt to stop Dong Zhuo. He resorted to asking the tyrant's own ally, Dao Xian, for assistance. As they were old friends, Dao Xian agreed and sent 3,000 elite troops to bolster his ranks. Li Zhue and Guo Si clashed at Zhongmu County against Xu Jin, where they completely crushed his unit. With nobody left to stop them, the pair then met with Zhang Ji and began to raid the residents in Chen Liu and Ying Chuan commanderies. Tao Tao and Zia Hao Yuan, who was the current administrator of Chen Liu, were unable to stop them, having already suffered a great defeat. This led to many innocents being captured and enslaved by Dong Zhuo's forces. Li Zhue, Guo Si, Fan Shao, Niu Fu and Zhang Ji were all stationed outside when Dong Zhuo was assassinated by Lu Bu. Initially, it looked like Niu Fu would be elected to lead the group, but when he chose to flee with treasures instead, his subordinate Hu Chu'e killed him. When the four remaining generals pleaded to be spared by Wang Yun, who had orchestrated the assassination plot, they were denied. Wang Yun had actually provided amnesty towards all of Dong Zhuo's old subordinates except for these four, as they were the closest aides to Dong Zhuo's regime. They panicked and sought to relinquish their titles and go into hiding but Zhi Yashu convinced them to take this opportunity to attack Chang'an instead. Since after the coup, the new regime was quite unstable, whilst the Liang province faction could still be reunited. As they made their way towards Chang'an, they only had a few thousand soldiers, but more Liang province residents joined them along the way. Two Liang generals who had pledged themselves to Lu Bu, Zhu Rong and Hu Zhen, were sent by Wang Yun to intercept them. Zhu Rong was killed in the first encounter whilst Hu Zhen led his troops to join back up with his old comrades, massively bolstering their numbers. Many more people flocked to fight under them on the way, and by the time they reached Chang'an, they numbered over a 100,000. The Battle of Chang'an was fought on the 28th of June, 192. Li Zhue and Guo Si led their forces in a victory against Lu Bu and Wang Yun. Many civilians and officials were killed as they secured control of the city, with Wang Yun being captured and executed. Lu Bu was forced to flee to Yuan Shu just 37 days after their new regime was installed. It's rumoured that during this battle, Lu Bu tried to break the siege by charging out of the gates, but was forced back in. 
it claims he seriously injured Guo Xi in a duel. It's also rumoured that Li Zhue announced to Wang Yun that the Liang forces would leave if Wang Yun came with them. This drove him to fear for his life as he became convinced that they didn't want the city and so committed suicide. Emperor Zian was then taken hostage by Li Zhue and Guo Xi, who then promoted Fan Chao to the rank of General of the Household, where more rumours follow their activities. It states that the four comrades all demanded high ranks, promoted and demoted anyone they saw fit at a whim, and also thought about deposing the emperor to take the throne for themselves, but they were dissuaded of this by Jia Zhu. It's claimed that Liu Biao, Yuan Shu, and Li Ru were all promoted by them, with the latter forcing the emperor to promote him numerous times, enfeef him, and give him a ceremonial act of military authority. Apparently Tao Tao even paid tribute to them when they were at the height of their power. In March of 194, Ma Teng had become vassalized by Li Zhue and Guo Xi, and so requested some private provisions from the capital, but he was refused. Ma Teng then started a rebellion and killed an envoy sent by the emperor who wanted to broker peace. Han Sui was then sent to see if he could convince him to lay down arms, but upon arriving at the rebel camp, Han Sui joined forces with Ma Teng instead. The rebels then secretly contacted several high-ranking spies within Chang'an, who belonged to Liu Yan. These spies included his first and second sons, bearing in mind that Liu Zhang was Liu Yan's youngest son. The spies were discovered, but managed to meet up with the rebels at Ma Teng's camp. Li Zhue then sent his nephew Li Li, Guo Xi, and Fan Chao to counter the Liang rebel force. They dealt a devastating blow towards them at Changping Pass, killing over 10,000 soldiers in the fighting. Fan Chao went on to suppress more Xiang rebels later in this year, and became one of the most powerful figures in the central government alongside Li Zhue and Guo Xi. Fan Chao had scolded Li Li for not trying his best throughout the battles, which caused Li Li to dislike him. When he ordered Fan Chao to pursue the enemy, he refused, due to his friendship with Han Sui, which then led to Li Li becoming even more resentful of him. Li Li later reported this to his uncle, who alongside Guo Xi both became suspicious of Fan Chao. Their respective subordinates urged them to go to battle against him, but Xia Zhu reprimanded them for their behaviour and convinced them all to avoid conflict. Xia Zhu soon resigned, after his mother passed away in order to carry out his duty of filial mourning. With him gone, tensions soon began to rise within the faction once more. As Fan Shao grew in status and power, the pair resorted to luring him into a trap where they assassinated him. It's rumoured that the trap was a welcome banquet to honour the army's return, where Fan Shao was openly executed at the party. His death caused many of his generals to distrust Li Zhue, but his regime went unchallenged for quite a while. It wasn't long after this until Guo Xi's wife, Lady Xiong, grew suspicious that her husband was having an affair with one of Li Zhue's concubines. It's rumoured that the emperor grew tired of waiting for loyal servants to come save him. This led to a devoted minister proposing his idea to drive a wedge between the two. It's claimed that the minister planted the seed of suspicion in Lady Xiong, which inspired her future actions. She poisoned gifts of food from Li Zhue to convince Guo Xi that he was not to be trusted. Yet another rumour suggests that she fed it to their dog who then died. This convinced Guo Xi that Li Zhue was indeed not to be trusted. Guo Xi eventually attended another banquet of Li Zhue's where he got very drunk. He panicked and thought he had been poisoned and so ingested liquid faeces to make himself vomit. Li Zhue obviously became greatly offended at this, which drove the two into battle against one another in the year 195. Li Zhue invited Ji Azu back to the capital to serve as the general who upholds righteousness before discussing his plan to kidnap the emperor. Mozu, mozu. Ji Azu strongly objected to this, but Li Zhue didn't listen and proceeded with his plan anyway. This caused Guo Xi to take many imperial ministers as hostages as the pair both grasped for legitimacy. Each day the relationships between the two factions worsened, and at its peak, tens of battles were fought each day in the alleyways and marketplace of Chang'an. In one of the fights, the emperor's own tent was damaged in the crossfire. Around this time, Shang Ziyu approached Ji Yezu and asked him why he remained in the capital. He explained that he had received grace from the empire and so wouldn't betray its trust in him. He said to Zhang Ziyu, if you wish to leave, you can go. I won't leave. Li Zhue used his accumulated wealth to bribe many Xiang leaders to support him against Guo Xi, 
They acted brutishly when they arrived at the capital, as they were promised riches and concubines by Li Jue, and were very eager to receive their gifts. Emperor Xi'an grew worried, and turned to Xia Zhu for help. He devised a plan to help the emperor, and secretly invited the chieftains to a remote location for a banquet. He treated them as honoured guests, and gifted them some very expensive but materialistic gifts. Overjoyed and merry, Xia Zhu was able to convince the chieftains to leave quietly, causing Li Jue to lose their support. Xia Zhu played an important role when resolving the conflict between Li Jue and Guo Xi, whilst ensuring the safety of the emperor when he desperately needed it. Either of the following accounts may have happened, or perhaps both. Either Xia Zhu and Zhang Ji's continuous persuasions convinced the two warlords to stop fighting, or the emperor wrote an edict to the pair, which was then delivered by Xia Zhu, which finally made them temporarily cease fire. The emperor wanted to leave the city whilst he had a chance. Guo Xi escorted him back to Luoyang alongside Yang Ding and Dong Cheng. On his way, Guo Xi changed his mind and wanted to go to Mei County instead, which caused the emperor to flee. Guo Xi tried to reclaim him, but Yang Ding and Dong Cheng turned on him and helped the emperor reach Yang Feng. Yang Feng had been dismissed earlier after he plotted to assassinate Li Jue and was convinced by Zhu Huang to help escort the emperor on his journey to Luoyang. They all contributed to successfully fighting off Guo Xi's soldiers. In 195, the duo foresaw their downfall and regretted their decision to let the emperor leave. They decided to launch a pursuit force to reclaim him. At this time, the emperor had very little food. It's mentioned that some court officials had to dig tree roots out from the earth in order to survive. On their way to Luoyang, Li Xue and Guo Xi defeated some minor forces led by Yang Ding and the emperor's loyalists. Li Jue had captured four generals that he hated and he wanted them executed, but Xia Zhu spoke in their defence and saved their lives by telling Li Jue, they are the emperor's subjects, how can you harm them? When they eventually reached the old capital, they were driven back by Yang Feng and Dong Cheng, who at this point had the support of the White Wave bandits. Zhang Yang had also arrived with reinforcements to help them as well. He was one of the few warlords who actually replied to the emperor's pleas for aid, whilst being the first to arrive. After their defeat, Guo Xi returned to Mei County, whilst Li Jue retreated to Chang'an. Guo Xi was killed two years later by his subordinate, who then led the remnants of his troops to join up with Li Jue in the year 197. Not even a year went by until Li Jue also met his fate at the hands of his own men. Du Wan Wei responded to one of Tao Tao's envoys who were sent to incite the Western warlords to attack Chang'an. In the summer of 198, Du Wan Wei attacked Li Jue and killed his family. He then sent his head to Tao Tao, the new de facto ruler of the emperor, as a sign of submission. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.